For more than a century, we held that the universe had drawn a straight line and a fixed speed limit that could not be broken, the very fabric of space-time. Nothing with mass could travel faster than light. It was Einstein's creed, the highest wall. And so, generation after generation, within that cage, we dreamed. Our movies dared to imagine warp drives, hyperspace, wormholes. Science, however, always intervened to say, nice fantasy, but impossible. Until now. Behind tightly guarded lab doors and unnamed research groups, a quiet revolution has begun to crack the cosmic code. Scientists have discovered not one but several mathematically sound approaches to travel faster than the speed of light. And not just by a little, some proposals suggest ten times faster. Suddenly, ideas once dismissed as sci-fi hallucinations are being published in peer-reviewed journals. The future isn't knocking. It is wrinkling space around our front door. If this technology becomes real, everything changes, time, distance, reality itself. So hold on, because what you're about to hear may be the first chapter in a story that ends with humans leaving the galaxy behind for good. Since 1905, the speed of light, roughly 299,790 to kilometers per second, has haunted physicists like a ceiling that isn't there. The closer an object with mass gets to this speed, the more energy it demands. To actually reach it would require an infinite amount of energy which can't be done physically. Or so we thought. For decades, this law was taken as gospel, a cosmic sacred truth. It defined what was possible and what was not. However, there is something the textbooks did not mention. Einstein's theory describes spatial movement, but it doesn't account for moving space itself. What if, rather than propelling a ship, we could bend spacetime around it, standing still while the road beneath your feet races forward? That's the loophole, the exploit, the back door and the code of the universe. And it's no longer merely a Star Trek concept. Mathematicians and physicists around the world are converging on this point, racing to master the geometry of warp fields, bubble-like distortions in spacetime that could make superluminal travel not only possible but surprisingly practical. Enter the Alcubierre Drive. First proposed in 1994 by Miguel Alcubierre, a Mexican physicist, this concept was a game-changer. He speculated about a warp bubble that compresses space in front of a ship and expands it behind. Inside that bubble, the ship does not move. Like a surfer on a board, it simply rides the distortion, a cosmic wave. From the outside, it looks like it's speeding faster than light. But according to relativity, it's not breaking any rules. The ship isn't moving through space, it's making space move. For years, this remained an amusing thought experiment, but impossible, requiring insane quantities of exotic matter with negative energy dense at Noi, something we weren't even sure existed. That changed when NASA physicist Harold G. White, while studying the Casimir effect, discovered something breathtaking. Tiny warp bubbles, real spacetime distortions, were observed at the nanoscale. Warp fields suddenly went beyond theoretical. They were observable and the required exotic material dropped from universe-sized quantities to a few hundred kilograms. Still unlikely, but no longer a dream. As word spread through hushed scientific circles, something fascinating happened. Researchers in Germany, the US, and Japan began working on warp physics quietly but independently. In 2024, a team at the University of Potsdam used gravitational wave simulations to test how warp fields might appear if real. The results were stunning. They not only reproduced theoretical warp bubble signatures, but also found that similar patterns may already exist in archived gravitational data from LIGO and other observatories. That is to say, warp fields, natural or artificial, may already be rippling through the universe. And this is where things become even stranger. These simulations suggested it might be possible to reverse engineer warp structures, not just build them. If we can identify an alien gravitational signature, we might one day replicate the warp field, like discovering tire tracks in the dirt and using them to design a vehicle. The repercussions are staggering. 
This would not only permit faster than light travel, it would allow us to mimic civilizations far more advanced than our own without even knowing who or what they are. For decades, warp drives were treated like physics unicorns, pretty poetic and entirely fictitious. But today, three distinct models exist with real math behind them, Alcubierre's original, the modified Natario drive, and White's energy-saving bubble geometry. None of them violate the laws of physics. All of them sidestep Einstein's limit, not by smashing through it, but by circumnavigating it. What we used to call impossible is now being taught in advanced propulsion labs. And this isn't motivated by Hollywood dreams. It's driven by necessity. Earth is fragile. We have no backup world. If we want to survive, not just as a culture, but as a species, faster than light travel is no longer a choice. It's inevitable. Proxima Centauri B. Trappist 1E. They're cosmically close, but unreachable with current technology. Unless we warp space, unless we bend the universe itself to our will. Because now, scientists aren't asking if warp drives can exist. They're asking when we'll ride in one. But if you travel faster than the speed of light, what happens to time and space? That's where things start to unravel. Moving closer to light, clocks slow down when speed causes time dilation. Your mass decreases as your distance decreases, increases further and causality itself breaks apart. Events could appear to happen before their motives. Consider switching on a flashlight and the wall is hit with its beam before you even move your hand. This is a paradox that has perplexed scientists and philosophers alike for decades. But this is where warp theory really shines. Because you are not inside a warp bubble actually speeding up your standing still in a quiet corner while space circulates around you. There will be no time expansion, no relativistic mass increases, no paradoxes. It's like folding a piece of paper so far apart that points touch. You are not required to cross the distance you break it down. The journey becomes a real-world ripple and causality remains intact, at least based on our current understanding. However, when warp travel becomes a reality, we will need to redefine sequence as well as speed. Because once you begin moving faster than light, the question is no longer where are you going but when. The team led by Harold White didn't just stumble upon warp bubbles in a lab they may have stumbled upon a blueprint for a technology that predates humanity. Their work with the Casimir effect revealed properties in nanoparticles remarkably comparable to the warp field equations predicted. They were not created, they were found. That raises a haunting possibility. What if warp occurs naturally in the universe? What if this geometry is just a piece of the cosmic code written into spacetime itself, waiting to be unlocked? And this is where the German simulations of gravitational waves by the team come back into focus. If we can figure out naturally occurring warp fields, who's to say they're natural at all? Perhaps their footprints remnants, the afterglow of engines built by civilizations long before us, racing without rockets but through spacetime itself. If we can find them, we do not need to create warp travel from scratch. We just need to replicate the trails already left behind. Similar to how ancient people copied constellations onto cave walls, we might be imitating the cosmic highways of the gods. It is not by chance that this occurs despite research picking up speed in public labs. Oddly, there isn't any commentary from places like NASA, SpaceX, or the Department of Defense. For a very long time, unusual means of transportation have revolved around secret programs. Now that warp bubbles are appearing under close inspection, the silence is deafening. Despite this, Harold White's lab technically works under NASA but with unusual independence. Its findings, while public, frequently lack deeper commentary. Elon Musk's SpaceX has also hinted more than once at needing non-traditional means of getting to Mars and beyond. Behind the scenes, whispers emerge from physicists, private collaborations, military-adjacent experiments, and lectures on theories never included in publications. If a prototype exists or is being built, it will not be announced with much ado. It will be tested in silence, far from telescopes and headlines. 
Because when warp becomes real, the race is no longer just scientific, it is geopolitical in nature. Whoever controls spacetime doesn't just travel, they define the future. The ability to travel faster than light isn't just about exploration, it's about evolution. According to the Kadashev scale, humanity is still a type zero civilization. We only partially take advantage of our planet's power. A type one civilization makes use of all the energy available from its world. A type two harvests energy from its star. But a species that manipulates spacetime itself is something else entirely. That civilization doesn't just take longer journeys throughout the universe, it reshapes it. Warp bubbles, Casimir vacuums, gravitational geometries, that is what we're up against. This goes beyond technology. It's a passageway. Because if we learn to bend reality to move through it, then we may also learn to bend it in other ways, create matter from energy, manipulate gravity, even distort perception itself. Warp propulsion isn't the endgame, it's the beginning of an entirely new kind of physics. One in which distance becomes meaningless, dissolving into preference. To summarize, we would do more than just build ships. We'd be building a new version of humanity, one no longer restricted by previous limitations or even the boundaries of the universe as we believed we knew it. We looked up at the stars for centuries, drawing roads and lines we thought we could someday follow. Planets we dreamed of reaching, frontiers we hoped to cross. But the truth, it seems, was hiding in plain sight. The universe was never constructed as a map, it was built like a fabric. We were never meant to travel across it. We were meant to fold it, reshape it, and understand that space is not a barrier but a lever waiting for the right hands to lift it. Warp technology has ceased to be science fiction. It is becoming engineering. And this century, perhaps even this decade, we may witness the first artificial spacetime distortion made by human hands. From there, the stars will no longer be distant. They will be next door. But this isn't just about travel. It's about identity. The moment we bend the laws of the cosmos, we will no longer be merely a civilization of Earth. We will become something else entirely. A space-age civilization of intention, of thought. Now for the question, warp travel isn't just about if it will happen, but who will carry it out first and what they will find waiting on the other side. Do you think warp travel will happen in our lifetime? Or are we opening doors we were never meant to touch?